In this video, I'm going to show you a tool that helps you to create step-by-step -step guides like this in minutes. This amazing tool automatically takes screenshots as you click through the process. Imagine how much time you can save. What are you going to do with all that time saving? The guides are easily amended and shared with others. You also have options to edit the screenshots. One of the things I love about these guides is the Guide Me button. This will guide the learner through the process without them having to read through the guide. It will highlight where they need to click next in the web application. This is then picked up in the analytics so you can see how many steps in the guide your learners have followed. This is a great way to see what help your learners needed. So what is the name of this amazing tool? This tool is called Tango. The link is in the description and this is how it works. First install the free browser extension. With this free tool, you can create guides on how to use web applications like Canva. To create desktop application guides like how to use PowerPoint, you will need the pro version. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the free version. Once you've installed the Tango browser extension, you just jump to the site where you want to create the guide from. In this example, I wanna create a guide on how to use Canva, in particular, how to create a birthday card using Canva. So to start creating my guide, I first go into the Tango icon and I click this orange spot to start. The panel on the right stays open and that's so I can see the steps that I'm taking. There's also some options down here at the bottom and I'll explain how to use these in a moment. So let's go through the process of how to use Canva and how to create a birthday card using Canva. So I'm gonna click here, print products and on the right hand side, it's picked up that capture, it's picked up that step. So you can see that it's working. And then one folded card. And this then takes me in to a blank template. Now before I continue, just to explain some of the options we've got down here at the bottom. So the green button here is when you've completed the process, you would click there and that will finish it. I'm not quite ready to do that yet. You can pause it, so pause is quite handy. So pause, I can pause it, and then perhaps maybe I'm not sure which button to click next. So I could click here, and that's not gonna pick it up in the guide. So then I can just go back to where I was before, and then just unpause that. The other option you've got here is to restart. So if you realize that you went down the wrong path when creating this guide, you could restart it, and this will just take it back, right back to the beginning. I'm not going to do that now. I'm sure you get the idea, but it will just remove these steps here on the right and just takes me back to the home page of Canva in this example. You've got blur, you've got a live blur. So this will allow you to blur out elements as you go through the process. So if you wanted to hide anything that might be confidential. Personally, I prefer to do this at the end when I come to editing my guide. I just find it quicker to do it that way. So I'm going to leave that one for now. The scar just stops the whole recording process. So if I realize I've changed my mind, I didn't want to do this after all, I could just discard it and that would just delete the whole process. But you do have delete buttons here, so you can delete the steps. So if you went into this step by mistake, or you took the wrong direction, you could delete it here. So I'm just going to continue going through the steps. So I want a, a birthday card and this gives me a list of all the, the birthday card templates. And I'm just going to scroll down here a bit and just pick out a template that I want to use. And again, on the right, you can see that it's picking up those captures and it's gonna carry on here. Let's delete that. And I'm gonna go over to elements. And click here, let's type birthday. It brings me up the birthday elements. So I'm just gonna keep this really, really simple so you get the idea and I'm just going to bring this in to resize it. And then just to finish off, I'm just going to show people uh, that they can print from Canva. Where Canva will actually print the cards for them. So as you can see here on the right, it's, it's picked up that I've clicked on print Canva. But if I wanted to show this, show this panel here, I would need to click on it uh, to pick up that capture here on the right. If you don't want this orange box, uh, you can actually remove it as part of the editing process, which I'll show you in a moment. So once I'm done, uh, I just click here on the green tick and I get this fanfare, some, <laughs> some uh, ribbons 
flying in the air to, as a celebration that I've completed. So here we have the guide created. So let's just scroll down a bit to have a look. So we've got all the steps there. So I've been clicking through, it's been picking up the steps. And all of this can be changed, it's all fully amendable. You can amend all of this text here. So for example, how to create a birthday card using Canva. Well, that's what I want, so I'm happy with that one. Let's keep that one as it is. So down here, just to show you some of the options that you've got. Uh, so first off, you've got like this minus and plus sign. So this allows you to zoom in and out of the image. Plus, that brings me in closer, and then zoom out. I can actually bring it out, so that's pretty good. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, you've got options here to, to remove the screenshot. It would keep the step, but it just removes the screenshot. Um, you've also got this option here for adding the alternative text. So this is for screen readers. And then in the middle, uh, you can edit the screenshots. Let me show you that one now. So if I click here to edit the screenshots, uh, so you've got your options across here at the top. I think a lot of these are self-explanatory really. Uh, the first option here is the crop. So if you want to crop the image, uh, you can. And then you have other options here to add shapes, to freehand draw on the image, you can add text. And this last one here is the blur option. Uh, so personally, if I want to, to hide anything that might be confidential or, or any sort of data protection stuff, uh, I use this option at the end rather than whilst I'm recording. So if I click here, just to give you an example, I'm just gonna blur out this one. So it just blurs out. Um, and down here at the bottom, it will say blur the same across all, all steps. So if that text appears across other screenshots, then automatically it will blur those out. So you can actually go, get it to go off and find matches. Uh, but for this one here, I'm just gonna keep it as it is, just to, just to give you an example. Um, so once I've done that, once I'm happy with that, I just click save, and then that will just uh, bring me back uh, to my guide. Other options you've got down here, you have the option to add another step. And you've got different options here to add a step. So you've got insert step. So this allows you to, to manually type it in yourself. So you can actually type in the text here. You could, maybe you've got a screenshot separately that you want to include, you can pop that in. You can add a description. So you've got those options there. I'm just gonna delete this one. But you can also add links if someone had to go to another website, for example, you could you could add a link there or change the link. You can also add comments. So this is adding comments as kind of like a reviewer, really. Uh, if you were reviewing someone else's work, you can add a comment here as well. But for this example, I'm just gonna delete this step because I don't want that one in. I just wanted to show you how it works. So the other example we've got here is uh, you can insert headings. So this is quite good if you've got a lot of steps. In this example, here, I've got 18. So if I want to sort of break it up a bit, uh, then I can do that. So you've got insert heading, and that will just bring me up a sort of heading bar there. Where I could just type in the heading with a description. So it just helps you to, to break up your guide. The other examples you've got here, or the other options you've got here, you've got insert call out. Um, so this is quite handy for adding things like tips. So it gives you like a little information box there, and then you could add some tips uh, in here if you like, or some extra information with this particular step. And then the last two options um, is capturing. Uh, so you can capture the steps. So if I realize that I've missed something out whilst going through this process, I will click on here and this will allow me to start capturing again. So then I can go back into Canva and then pick up the next step that, that I might have missed. On my machine, I've got the desktop app. So Tango does have a desktop app where you can record desktop applications. And up here, I just want to point out as well, uh, you do have options to duplicate a step. You can also copy a link to this step. That's so where this is useful if, if you had like say 100 steps and somebody got stuck at a particular step, you could copy a link and it would just take them to that part uh, of the process. But I'm happy with that. I've got my design there. So that's my guys, just to, just to give you an idea. So up here at the top, the next thing you've got is share and export. So if I click on here, I'm gonna click. So what this does, this moves it into a team library. So anyone that's in my team can then access this guide and then they can make changes to it uh, as well. Uh, I'm just gonna click continue to this. So this box here is uh, where I can share. So I can share my guide by just putting people's email addresses in into here and then, and then invite them. Uh, I've got options here to embed, and you can choose the platform where you, where you want to embed to. 
And so there's different applications there like SharePoint or Notion. Uh, and then the last option you've got here is export. So this allows you to, to copy HTML and put it into a website. Um, you've got a copy markdown. And then the last option here is you can download it as a PDF. So if you want to send it out by email, perhaps you can download this as a PDF. Now the trouble with these export options, if you make any changes to your guides, it won't reflect in anything that you select from here. So whereas the share option, if I share a link to the guide, if I make any changes to that guide, uh, it will reflect, it will update the link that I might send out, whereas the export option won't. So for this example here, I'm not going to invite anyone. Uh, so let's just click out of that one. And I want to go back to my Tango main page. So I just click on the Tango here. This is the Tango workspace where I can see the other guides that I have created and the ones that have been shared by my team. Go to tango.us to try it for yourself. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.